This is very exciting for me because this is my first review video on my Health Hackers YouTube channel and I'm going to be reviewing the First Beat Lifestyle Assessment used by some elite athletes and wellness professionals, I'm told. It will involve me wearing this device stuck to my skin using electrodes that come in the box for the next three days and three nights starting tomorrow morning. It's going to track my heart rate variability. Now that refers to the variation in time between consecutive heartbeats. It's the kind of data that apparently can tell me how my body has been affected by stress, exercise, sleep. And so at the end of three days, I send this away and I should get back a whole load of information and I can have a chat with an expert to see if I could adjust my lifestyle to maybe recover more optimally or sleep better and just be healthier. Actually, the company says 82% of users have been able to improve stress management, exercise and quality of sleep, all from the information they got by wearing this for three days. It's day one, it's nearly 7 a.m. I'm in the gym ready for a workout and the electrodes are on. There's another one down there. They were really easy to stick on and I thought they might feel a bit bulky, but actually they feel really discreet. I pretty much instantly forgot I was even wearing them. It's day two and last night was the first time I wore the device to bed. I did one thing differently, I wore a top to bed because I didn't want to accidentally pull on this wire that connects the two electrodes and the device, that was fine. Uh, another thing to note is that this has a green flashing light, which is obviously more clear in the darkness, but that's not a complaint. And I was pleasantly surprised by my comfort level. You see, I like to sleep on my front and I'd figured this might get really annoying, uh, but it didn't. An important point to make, you need to keep a journal so that you know what you've been doing every day. Day three, and I've started to experience a little bit of irritation. You can switch these electrodes out daily. So I swapped my pads yesterday, and you can see here what I think is some remaining adhesive from yesterday's electrode, coupled with some clothing fluff. I felt like I've wanted to scratch this area a few times today, but it's not a big deal. And actually, I often react to plasters like this too. It's day four, trial's over. Yes, they've left a little bit of a mark, but the instruction manual did warn about irritation and it doesn't hurt. So I'm sending back my device. They've given me a prepaid envelope, that's helpful. And I'll receive a lifestyle assessment. My report arrived in an email and here's what you need to know. The red zones, they mean stress. One of my strongest stress reactions happened here on day two while I was driving. The green zones, they mean recovery. So think of calming moments or sleep. And the blue, that marks physical activity, like here in the gym on day three. It's cool to know all this stuff, but if you're wondering what to really do with it or what it's really for, here is what Tina from First Beat told me. It's like a conversation starter or tool to look under the skin or under the surface in a way that to see things that you might not be aware of. And sometimes the result can be a very positive surprise that people might see that, great, that despite the uh, children keeping me sometimes awake and despite the heavy load of work, I'm actually coping just fine and my body's doing well. And then more of a reminder to keep going the same way. And other times it might be a, a surprise in a different direction that they think everything is well, but it shows that actually you really would benefit from adding some exercise into your life or to, to add some recovery practices into your evenings to make sure that your body can recover during the sleep time. So those green segments on the chart, are they really the key to having a healthy body? Um, I would say that the key is, is getting mostly or a lot of green when you're sleeping and getting enough sleep. What would a really unhealthy report look like? It can be pretty much just red, the stress reactions all day. And even that usually doesn't raise too many alarm bells if the sleep period is green. But then if the sleep period is also very red, and then when you look at the heart rate graph, the blue, the black graph that's drawn over the red bars, if the heart rate stays very elevated during nighttime. So you look at the person's heart rate during the daytime and maybe it's 
between 70 and 80 beats per minute and then they go to sleep and it stays at 70 or 80 beats per minute so even when you lie down and go to sleep your heart just keeps working so that's obviously that's a big load on the heart and on the body overall and most people have those kind of days sometimes like if they have a party with a lot of drinks or they are suffering with jet lag or they did some kind of a you know they went and ran a half marathon or something like that so then our body is overloaded on that day but an un unhealthy report would be one where that pattern sort of repeats from day to day and uh you know we can just see that it's it's on some kind of overdrive your result is it was a very very good result pretty much on you know across the board i guess what really stood out for me is that you had some great daytime recovery practices that you had marked in your journal and some of them and you, you've tested different methodologies but they showed up very nicely that when you even in the midst of a busy day when you did some kind of an, a practice with meditation or something like that it actually translated it into the green color which means recovery so your body was able to you know slow down and, and get recovery during that you also have good sleep but you need to make sure you sleep long enough so one of the nights you only had five hours of sleep and that wasn't on that day it probably wasn't quite enough so one thing that confused me was seeing red zones while I was asleep. How could I be really stressed while I'm asleep? <laughs> yeah, it can be in that, for example, if you have a very stressful day, busy day with lots going on. So when you go to sleep, you can, you can physically go to sleep, but your body and your brain kind of stays activated. It's like it's working through the stress of the day. It can also be an awake time. I do get up to go to the loo a lot in the night. So maybe they, maybe that was it. Exercise has sort of two effects on sleep. So the acute effect can sometimes make us sleep a little bit worse, whether you are a normal person just minding their fitness or a top level athlete. But if you do a high intensity exercise session, particularly towards the evening, like a football player who has a game in the evening or match in the evening, almost for sure the following night is going to be quite red because physically their body is still very sort of geared up and active from that and their heart rate is elevated. And that's a normal response to heart exercise. It's not anything to be worried about, but it's good to know that acutely exercise will have that effect. But in the long run, our database shows very, very clearly that people who are more fit they also have a capacity to recover better. So definitely that fitness does protect you from the negative effects of stress, even if acutely it might sometimes, you know, cause a few of those little stress spikes in your sleep if you, if you worked out really hard. Weightlifting is a good example that it can be a really, really hard workout, but as measured with heart rate, it doesn't necessarily look like it was that hard because you might do like a burst of high intensity lifts, but then you sit still for a couple of minutes to recover. And so the, the health effects of physical activity, what it shows in the report, it really looks at the cardiovascular health benefits. So benefits to your aerobic fitness, to your heart. How can we ever quantify the good results from that? Because someone could do lots and lots of weights, but they'd always get this low score because they're never getting their kind of cardiovascular workout, I guess. To, to actually measure the, the muscle work, then it would have to have some kind of EMG, you know, actually looking at muscle activation. And they aren't the most typical wearables that have that. I'm sure there is something out there, but it's not as nearly as common as the heart rate based devices are. Based on my chat with Tina, it looks like the recommendations for me to improve my health would be to keep up those green recovery periods during the day, get a more consistent sleep pattern going and mix up my exercise routine. So perhaps do a bit more cardio now and then instead of mainly weights. In terms of how much it costs to have this three day assessment, First Beat says it depends on your provider because they mainly sell to companies. So you might have a go on this through your personal trainer, for example. But to give you a rough idea, First Beat told me that it would be approximately 200 pounds if you got it from them. That includes the shipping, the three day assessment and the professional feedback at the end. They also told me to tell you to check out their website so that you can find a provider close to you. 
That's firstbeat.com. 